Welcome to 5-Minute German Grammar. Thank you for watching. This presentation will introduce possessive adjectives in the nominative and accusative cases. In English, an adjective shows ownership of something or a relationship between things. The possessive adjective must agree with the number, person, and, when applicable, gender of the possessor. For example, in the sentence you see on the screen, her, is a third-person singular feminine possessive adjective that agrees with an understood person owning the car. She, a third-person singular personal pronoun. Another important point is that the possessive adjectives must be placed before the thing that is being possessed. In this sentence, her comes before car, indicating ownership of the vehicle. German possessive adjectives function in much the same way, although with important differences we need to be aware of. Let's take a look at them now. Like English, possessive adjectives in German are organized by number, person, and gender. Mein, first person singular. Dein, second person singular. Sein, masculine third person singular. Ihr, feminine third person singular. Sein, neuter third person singular. Unser, first person plural. Euer, second person plural. Ihr, third person plural. The formal possessive adjective, both singular and plural, is ihr, which has a capitalized first letter. You may have noticed that some of the possessive adjectives have ein in their roots, which helps to explain why these adjectives are declined like indefinite articles. Even if an adjective does not have ein in its root, such as ihr, it still follows the same declension pattern. You may find it useful to review the presentation on indefinite articles before continuing with this one. Let's decline a few possessive adjectives to see how they work. In this sentence, das ist ein Tisch, that is his table, the number and gender of the understood possessor, er, agrees with the number and gender of the possessive adjective. It is third person, singular, masculine. But since the masculine noun Tisch is in the nominative case, the ending for the possessive adjective must also be masculine nominative. This changes, however, when the masculine noun is in the accusative case. Ich sehe seinen Tisch. I see his table. The possessive adjective still agrees with the number and gender of the understood possessor, but here the ending must show that the adjective modifies a masculine noun in the accusative case. Let's see what happens when we change the possessive adjective. In this sentence, the number and gender of the understood possessor, Z, agrees with the number and gender of the possessive adjective. It is third person, singular feminine. But since the masculine noun Tisch is still in the nominative case, the ending of the possessive adjective must also be masculine nominative. And when the masculine noun is in the accusative, the ending for the possessive adjective must also be masculine accusative. Finally, as you see on this screen, it is important to note that the second person plural possessive adjective oya has some unusual forms in the nominative and accusative. The rule here is that if oya adds an ending when being declined, then the second e in the root will be dropped. So in this sentence, we don't remove e from the root since the possessive adjective modifies a noun that is the subject of the sentence. The adjective, therefore, is in the nominative case and does not take an ending. However, in this sentence, we remove e from the root since the possessive adjective modifies a noun that is the direct object of the sentence. The adjective must therefore have a masculine accusative ending. The five-minute German grammar series is produced by David Neville, Associate Professor of German. The video scripts and lecture slides are released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, share-alike 4.0 international license. Don't be a square. Remix and share.